banana fritters. Take your bananas, and to get them really nice and soft, just rub the banana. Sift together flour and baking powder. Sugar into the flour. Then add coconut for texture and a pinch of salt. Sounds strange in the dessert, but it works brilliantly, especially with the fritters. It makes the batter nice and crisp. Start crushing. And use the back of the fork and just push it against the side of the bowl. And then, once you've mixed that through, I'm going to make that mix now slightly fragrant with some lime zest. Now, the lime just really elevates the sort of richness and the denseness of the banana. Cover it with cling film so it doesn't get a skin on top. Sit that in the fridge for 15 minutes. Batter now is ready. Use a metal spoon to drop the batter to the bottom of the pan. The minute they hit that oil, they puff up. That's why it's important to put your spoon into the oil so the mixture runs off and creates this lovely little fritter. And then gently fry. Get a slotted spoon and nice and carefully turn them over. The smell of that lime is extraordinary. Fry for two to three minutes. As they start floating, it signifies the fact that they're cooked off with the gas and just let them drain. Look at those beauties. Lovely. Sprinkle them when they're hot with the sugar. It actually sticks to them. They're done, ready to go. Gazpacho. For dessert, sweet and refreshing pineapple like you've never tasted before. First job, the gazpacho soup. For me, the secret of a great gazpacho is overripe tomatoes. Peppers, cucumber, a little bit of heat with the garlic. But you've got to leave it to marinade. First, peppers. Cut around the flat edges to minimise waste. Then chop. Well, the nice thing about making a gazpacho, there's no set recipe because you can put it together purely all tomatoes. Half peppers, half tomatoes. I like the flavour of the cucumber in there as well. That gives it that freshness. The secret of a great gazpacho is the longer you leave it marinating, the better the flavour. So if you can get this done the night before and left in the fridge, the results are stunning. The green and red peppers have subtly complementary flavours and go well with ripe tomatoes. Start off by removing the bitter core. Get a little knife and just put it in where the core is and twist it round and you get this little core out. I remember my first experience eating a gazpacho in Spain. Mind-blowing. I've never forgotten that. Quarter your tomatoes, keeping the juicy seeds that add so much depth of taste. Nice. Then from there, cucumber. Just peel that. The seeds I'm going to leave in. That gives it the flavour and the texture. The cucumber in a gazpacho does exactly what it does in a pims. It sort of freshens it up and makes it mouth-watering. Slice that in half. Again, into quarters and chop. Now to give gazpacho its unique texture and thicken the soup, bread. And the crispier the crust, the better. Then garlic, thinly sliced. Next, spring onions. Nice and roughly chopped. And basil, stalks and all. We can use stalks and basil stalks, parsley stalks, tarragon stalks. They have the most amazing flavour. Basil, in. And now, we're going to start marinating it. Salt, black pepper and a good coating of olive oil. This gives it a glossy, creamy flavour. And the sherry vinegar. That's the perfect vinegar for the gazpacho. It's a strong, acidic complement to the flavours. Then just mix it up. And the smell already is incredible. It doesn't look like a gazpacho, but by the time this marinades and all those flavours start getting to know one another, all of a sudden you've got this huge explosion of contrast. Now, push that down. In the restaurants, we press the marinade down overnight, a couple of big pans on top, and we crush all the ingredients and then blitz it the next day. The flavour is extraordinary. 
Leave all those fresh ingredients packed with goodness to marinate from half an hour to even overnight. And then when you blend it, it just comes together like this sumptuous, rich, delicious chilled soup. To go with my super tasty soup, I've got an ultra healthy and exciting dessert. Carpaccio of pineapple, which is a chefy way of saying super thinly sliced. It's done with a twist. We're going to have a delicious flavoured salt. It has to be flavoured with vanilla. Simply scrape out the vanilla seeds and add to sea salt along with the pot to store. Now, that basically keeps forever. There's no sell by date because it's salt and vanilla. So, so fragrant, so delicious. You don't need much of this fragrant salt to intensify the sweetness of the pineapple. The pineapple. Slice peeled pineapple into wafer-thin pieces. It's almost like nice little discs. Slightly transparent. Once you've sliced the pineapple, take the flavour to another level. A light sprinkle of vanilla salt and arrange the pineapple in a flower shape. It's a beautiful way of finishing a meal. The fragrance of the vanilla, the crunch with the salt. And the vanilla salt just marinades the pineapple beautifully. Then scatter nutrient-rich pomegranate seeds over the top. To finish, finely shredded fresh mint. Just slice them really thin. And then that'll give that nice, cool, minty flavour to the pineapple. My carpaccio is ready, and my gazpacho has been marinating in the fridge. Time to blend the soup. In. Onto your blender and start off nice and slowly. Blend until super fine and gloriously silky and serve refreshingly cold. Get your bowl and pour it in. Now, to finish it, get some fresh basil, roll it nice and tight and shred it and then drop it into your bowl. Fresh chopped basil and then finally just a touch of extra virgin olive oil just to give that really nice additional freshness. And look at that, healthy and delicious. Gazpacho soup to me is a taste of Mediterranean sunshine in a bowl, followed by the wafer-thin carpaccio of pineapple with jewels of pomegranate goodness for dessert. Practically all of your five a day in one incredible healthy lunch.